network ke network implementations what do you expect in the session various standards if you don't know any standards by the end of the session you will know some of the standards which are used to implement network so agenda of the session is osi model client network resource access ethernet networks token ring networks fddi or fiber distributed data interface networks and wireless technologies and standards this is from the implementation point of view implementation perspective the osi model although the osi model is just a model not a specification it is generally regarded as the most complete model as well it should be nearly all the popular network protocol suite in use today were developed before the osi model was defined osi seven layer model there are seven layers application layer on the top presentation layer just below it session layer transport layer network layer data link layer and at the bottom layer we have the physical layer so lower level protocol is physical highest level is application layer network resource access osi components enable distributed access by distinguishing between local and remote resources and interacting with distant operating systems accessing remote resources we have two ways to access a remote resource static connection and dynamic connection when we say static connection it is initialized by a user or system administrator prior to accessing a remote resource difficult to initialize and maintain second is dynamic connection it is established through interaction between a resource layer and a primary resource a registration repository more flexible but it require a distributed registry of resource name and locations premises of remote resource access we need location transparency then we also need service oriented resource access and resources can be moved among the computer systems in that case service oriented resource access layers between service layer this service oriented resource access layers between service layer and device drivers the service provider its server interface to specific resources and resource locator it locate resources referred to in service request from local or remote users and programs and forwards service request to appropriate service provider and maintains a resource registry as well software components that support service oriented resource access we have application programs then we have logical service layer there is a service call made between this application layer will make a service call to logical local service layer then we have another resource locator there is a service request made here then here we have service request which consist of lower level protocol stack and then once the passage you know the packet is converted into network message and then it will be communicated to the other location or remote systems service request service provider local drive device driver and local hardware device this is a software component that support service oriented resource access which actually means a service is accessing a remote access a remote you know uh, resource 
SOAP Simple Object Access Protocol SOAP basically what we do in this we create XML based objects messages are encoded encoded in XML and transmitted using HTTP so application that is the client requests some parameters and SOAP encoder will or decoder will create the SOAP message which will be in XML document then this XML document or object will be transported or communicated over HTTP connection through HTTP request at the receiving end HTTP connection when manager will pull that message XML document decode it and request parameters and then application server will use that data so it enables object to be located anywhere on the internet so we use SOAP for that purpose simple object access protocol Ethernet and token ring networks Ethernet networks Ethernet is the most widely installed local area network technology it is specified in a standard IEEE 802.3 Ethernet was originally developed by Xerox from an earlier specification called AlohaNet and then developed further by Xerox, DEC and Intel. An Ethernet LAN typically uses coaxial cable or special grade of twisted pair wires we discussed the media in the previous session the most commonly installed Ethernet systems are called 10 base T and provide transmission speed up to 10 Mbps this standard raised the Ethernet speed limit from 10 MB to 100 Mbps with the only minimal changes to the existing cable structure then we have gigabit ethernet and 10 gigabit ethernet the gigabit ethernet was developed to meet the need for faster communication network with applications such as multimedia the most important difference between gigabit ethernet and fast ethernet include additional support of full duplex operation in mac layer and the data rates the 10 gigabit ethernet is the fastest and most recent of ethernet standards ieee 802.3 ae it defines the version of ethernet with nominal rate of 10 gigabits per second that makes it 10 times faster than the gigabit ethernet a token ring we know that it consists of a token and uh, token consists of the details to the recipient where the packet is to be delivered so those who have the for which the token is there that will grab the token and will put the data and then data will be headed to the destination node in the ring how it works a token ring network is a local area network in which all computers are connected in a ring or star topology and a bit or token passing scheme is used in order to prevent the collision of data between two computers that want to send messages at the same time the token ring protocol is the second most widely used protocol on local area network after ethernet the ibm token ring protocol led to a standard version specified as IEEE 802.5 both protocols are used and are very similar the IEEE 802.5 token ring technology provides the data transfer rates either 4 or 16 megabits per second then we have FDDI fiber channel FDDI is a standard developed by American National Standard Institute NC for transmitting data on optical fibers it supports transmission rate of up to 200 Mbps it uses a dual ring 
used to carry data at 100 MB per second ring used for primary backup in case first ring fails if no backup is needed second ring can also carry the data increasing the data rate up to 200 mbps it supports up to 1000 nodes and the range is about 200 km fddi uses basic topologies that is including a ring topology star topology and tree topology then transmission media fdi fddi uses optical fibers as the primary transmission medium but it can also run over copper cabling fddi over copper is referred to as a copper distributed data interface that is cddi fddi defines two types of optical fiber single mode and multi mode the multi mode fiber uses led as light generating device Multimode fiber allows multiple modes of light to propagate through the fiber. Multimode fiber is generally used for connectivity within a building or a relatively geographically contained environment. And single mode fiber generally uses lasers. Wireless, no physical transmission device. Telecommunications in which electromagnetic waves carry the signal or part or all of the communication path like Wi-Fi, mobile phones, GPS, cordless mouse, keyboard, home entertainment system, wireless Ethernet that is Bluetooth. These are all examples of wireless. There is no physical transmission device here. The standard which defines this is the wireless, which is 802.11. 802.11 specification for wireless NAN defined by IEEE covers physical and data link layers. So, architecture consists of basic service set that is BSS and extended service set that is ESS. Basic service set BSS and extended service set ESS. What is basic service set? The BSS is a building block of a wireless LAN. It made up of a stationary or a mobile service station or access point that is AP optional central base station. Without an access point or AP we call it as ad hoc architecture. Standalone network can't send data to other basic service set that is other BSS can form a network without the need of access point with an access point infrastructure network can be used this is an example basic service set AP stands for access point BSS stands for basic services this is station station and no this is ad hoc network BSS without an access point but with access point you have a kind of uh, antenna or you kind of uh, some access point from where rest all are connecting that's a typical example of mobile tower which have access point and all station connect using the mobile tower so that is bss with access point exs is extended service set it's made up of two or more bss with access points connected through a distributed system that is wireless LAN. The distributed, distributed, uh, distribution system connect the access points in the basic service sets or BSS. So ESS extended service set, BSS basic service set and AP stands for access point. So we create a distributed system which has which is connected to the server or the gateway and then this distribution system connect to access point which in turn creates cells this is becomes a basic service set another basic service set another basic set and this is a typical photograph if you can visualize the wireless mobile or the mobile phone towers so think of that distribution system mobile towers 
and the mobiles within that scope within that area which are connecting to a given cell so these circle or ellipse dotted you can think of them as your cells that is why we call them as cell phones the phone which are available within a cell so when we are moving you are you are changing cell wireless lan IEEE 802.11 IEEE 802.11 is a set of media access control MAC and physical layer specifications for implementing wireless local area network that is WLANs. They are the world's most widely used wireless computer networking standards used in most home and office networks to allow laptops printers and smartphone to talk to each other and access the internet without connecting wires the base version of standard was released in 1997 and has subsequent amendments ieee 802.11a this standard is capable of producing a higher level of performance and being a, in a hand uh, being in a band which is used less than the levels of interference are less allowing high levels of performance although 802.11a was rectified at the same time as uh, 802.11b it never caught on the same way despite the fact that it offered a much higher data transfer rate 802.11b it was the first wireless LAN standard to be widely adopted and built in to many laptop computers and other forms of equipment the standard for 802.11b was ratified by IEEE in July 1999 and the idea for wireless networking quickly caught up with many Wi-Fi hotspots being set up so that business people could access their email and serve the internet as required when they are traveling. It was only after 802.11 was ratified and product became available that Wi-Fi took off in the large way. 802.11g After the introduction of Wi-Fi in 802.11a and 802.11b standards, the 802.11b standard became the most popular operating in 2.4 GHz IMSM band. This standard proved to be the most popular despite the faster operating speed of the variant of uh, the standard because of the cost producing chips to operate at 2.4 gigahertz were much less than one that ran at 5 gigahertz in order to provide the higher speeds of 802.11a while operating on 2.4 gigahertz ism band a new standard was introduced known as 802.11g it soon took over from the B standards. So we are right now using 802.11G for hotspots, mobile hotspots. That's all for this session. Thank you.